really should have figured this out before. Can you help me? <laughs> There's tape right here. I'm thinking maybe it's best to just tape it to this. Can you just tape it right here? Sorry, you guys. I went live and didn't realize that we were having a malfunction. Well, I just started having a malfunction. Is that going to hold, do you think? Uh-huh. Can you lift it and put it on here so we can see higher? Uh, thank you so much. Is that I better? Think, I think it is. Can we is. back it up? Um... This is the view right here. Maybe. That might be good. That's probably good. Maybe tip it up a little more. Can I do that? There we go. <laughs> Wait, right you. there? Ah, okay. I got paid on me. Kaka. Okay. That's really thank good. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I don't know what possessed me to think that I was going to go live at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it's 7.23. I'm sorry. Just know that every time I say I'm going to go live at this time, it's, it's really just a rough estimate. <laughs> it's never that time. <laughs> Anyways, how is everybody doing? Hi, Sally. Hi, Jane. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Todd. Hope you're feeling better. You look better. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> I am feeling a little better. I've been, uh, those of you that are on Patreon know I, I, so I have a, like, I get allergies with dogs and cats, but for some reason, this allergy with dogs, it, it has been like lingering for five days now, but it's, it's turned into something almost worse than allergies. I don't even know what it is, but I feel way better than I did the previous days, but. Thank you, Crystal. Hi, Prudence. Hi, Tracy. I'm glad you're here too. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Galahad. I really like the art behind you. Thank you. So, thank you. We got our first donation, Coupon Cutie. Thank you so much, Coffee Fund. I actually, I have my coffee. Me and um, Amanda were painting and we're, we're gonna put these up on, cause I sold completely out of my pieces. So this one, this one's gonna be up online as well as this one. This one is Amanda 2.0's. And then <laughs> compared, it looks so much better. But then this little one's mine over here. It's literally still drying. There's paint on it right there. But yeah, we painted for a little while today. So there, once we are done with this live, I will link the paintings in the description box down below. I just wanted to hurry and set everything up. And I don't know why, so seven o'clock, I, I need to stop doing that. I need to stop being like, this is the time frame because I obviously, I will never be able to do it. Anyway, how was everyone's week? How was everyone's uh, St. Patty's Day? I actually spent a lot of time, actually pretty much the whole day with Gerald and Amanda 2.0 and Gerald's husband. We uh, filmed a podcast that's gonna be coming out and I was, I actually really enjoyed it. We had, we talked a lot about like what we have learned in our past relationships and you know, worst breakups versus most mature breakups and things that are good to bring into the next relationship, like stuff like that. So I'm excited for you guys to see it. I'm new to your channel. Well, welcome lady, Lady Jade. Thank you, Taylor. Yeah, I feel a lot better now. I did not look very good this past week. I've been like ugh, dry coughing and I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. It's, it's way better now than it was, but. So number 66, we don't have a lot to say about him because to be honest, I am off my game this week because of being sick and everything. Like I, I literally spent an entire day just ordering Uber Eats and laying in bed <laughs> and then trying to, to slowly get out of that. So, but I do know number 66 is the son of number 16, which we did a whole episode on number 16, who is a lawyer for the order. Um, 
He's a member of the order. He's, a, I believe he's polygamous. <laughs> uh, I, and I believe he did go to school to be a lawyer, just like his dad as well. So I don't know if he practices right now, but it's crazy. The more I've been doing these weekly culty cups of coffee, the more I realize how many lawyers the order actually has. Like, I really only thought there was two, like three main lawyers for the order. There's a lot. There's like a large amount of lawyers for how many people are in the order. It's kind of interesting. They, they make sure to have those. <clears throat> how much is Patreon thinking about signing up and joining the club? Oh, thank you, Rachel. So we have a lower level Patreon that's, that's uh, I think it's 605. It's like the exact price of a, my favorite Starbucks drinks. That's what, what we decided on. And that, uh, I'll, I'll leave the links after I'm done with this video, I'll leave the links for the Patreon down below, but we have the lower level, which that one consists of every week I do a, uh, we discuss serial killer podcast, not podcast, serial killer. There's this book that one of my Patreon members sent me and it has like descriptions of a bunch of serial killers. And a lot of my Patreon members actually know a lot about that stuff. And we talk in depth about kind of just trying to dissect why the person did what they did. It, if it if it comes from childhood trauma or if it comes from like, we never really get down to the bottom of it. <laughs> it's like a discussion, but so that's what's on the lower level. And the upper level is more of like really long live streams that get deleted. They're like limited time live streams. And that is 16. So if you pay 16, you get both. So I'll have to leave it in the description box down below, but we'd love to have you over there. The, the culty crew is really fun and we have a discord too where everyone can chat back and forth because that's the one thing I didn't like about Patreon is that um, you can message me, but you can't message each other. So that's why we created discord so that everyone can kind of be friends on there. And it's kind of cool because you'll see in the culty in the comments in here, people are always saying hi to each other. Everyone's friends with each other. It's a little community. So we'd love to have you. Hi, Emily. Hi, Diana. Oh, she put the link in there. Thank you, Diana. Um, Patreon is like a little family. Yep, it really is. You guys are my, my therapist. <laughs> I finally made it to a live. Hi, Aisha. Thank you, Janice. Janet, Janet, Jenica, sorry. <laughs> I read that completely wrong. Love this little community. Always a great way to start the week. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I always love doing these lives too. Do you have to join Patreon to join Discord? I mean, that's how it's shared is on the Patreon, but it's just the, yeah, the six, if you pay just the $6, then it, there's a, there should be a link to be able to go into the Discord. I actually should repost that now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> But we also do Zoom calls. I forgot to say that. We will do, those are the like most fun thing to do on Patreon is we get to actually see face-to-face. -face. For Christmas, we did a little Christmas Zoom call and got to see face-to-face -face, like what everyone is doing on Christmas Eve. It was really cool. Could someone post a link to? Very nice, Sandy. Everyone's like talking back and forth. But, um, I feel like I had some more announcements, but I'm like, I, f I feel like my brain is like throbbing <laughs> from everything, from my sickness, so I can't think straight, but, um, you will be seeing a podcast of me, Amanda, and Gerald coming out, and I am working on the, uh, Calvin interview. That one's probably going to be a two-part because it's such a long episode, but... I hope you guys like it. We talk about a lot of really cool stuff in there. And I really am excited to hear your guys' opinions on what, what I'm coming out with. <laughs> I did have a lot to say about too, the last video that I posted. Um, I talked a lot about it on Patreon as well. I, there's a lot going on with that last video that I posted, but I hope you guys, I honestly didn't realize how much it was going to help validate other people who have gone through the same things. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the whole Brian Nielsen video that I just posted last week. It 
I saw a lot of comments where people were really feeling validated in their experience going through a very similar thing. And I'm really glad that that was able to, like, that's the thing is like a lot of people think like sharing your, your like most vulnerable moments is going to be something that like reopens those wounds and isn't a good thing for you. And yes, it, it can talking about that whole process of what happened to us when we were just fresh out of a cult and then getting re-traumatized by this dude talking about it did bring up bad memories obviously nightmares things like that but it also helped us process it and it helped us feel validated so i'm really glad that that by us sharing and opening up helped other people you guys a lot of you guys actually to be able to kind of do the same thing and accept that this is something that happened and it doesn't mean it's your fault that it happened Sorry, I have a hard time on the spot talking about it because it's obviously it still is something that really is has affected me. And I, I'm I've how long has it been? It's like nine years since that happened, but it still is something that is like feels like a fresh wound a little bit because of the fact that it felt like there wasn't much validation because he got away with it because my best friend that his wife kind of gaslit me gaslit as well that kind of acting like nothing did happen. So it feels, you know, like there's no closure kind of, <laughs> but making that video and being able to really dissect the entire experience with Michelle and Priscilla was, I think a big part of the closure for me at least. But anyways, we talk a lot about it on Patreon. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. She just gifted five memberships. Hi, Eskel. I love the art in the background. Yeah, this one is Amanda 2.0s, and this one is mine. The tree. The tree's always mine. Thank you, Denise. You're so nice. Oh, thank you, Christina Fisher, for the donation. You're so sweet. Hi, Popcorn Golden. Denise, more money for the copy font. You're so sweet. I'm almost ready to ship your package out, Denise. <laughs> almost. The last video you posted was heavy, but I'm so glad you had the strength to share all of that. Thank you, Aisha. And that's the thing is it, sometimes I feel like doing heavy videos like that puts, like makes my immune system go down. Like I feel like that, I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like it made me, um, I don't know, can depression lower your immune system? I think it kind of can, but like editing that kind of content over and over and over and not leaving your room all day and be staring at that memory. It's different if you're editing someone else's story, but like I was so involved in that story that I don't know, it was actually pretty hard to edit. I'm, I'm thinking of, I should have just sent that to an editor, but. Hey Amanda, and hi to all the family. Hi DJ. I wanted to catch a charge because of the video. Yeah, and that's the thing is like, a lot of these men that do these things, they never get caught because a lot of the times, just like that, like you don't wanna embarrass the wife. You don't wanna, there's other people involved. It's not like it's just, black and white, go get them arrested. And a lot of the times it's someone that you trust, you know, that decides to do that. You three are so brave for keeping so open and vulnerable. Thank you, Jane. I love you all so much. Would you guys do a skating pool with me again? I mean, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. We should though. Escaping Polygamy, I mean, I don't know, it brings back so many memories. Like, I had to go back to get some clips from Escaping Polygamy, and I look back at how, how I used to be and act and look like, and I'm like, I'm really glad that I don't do those things anymore. <laughs> Come a long ways. Like, this is hurting my eyes, you know? I feel so bad for his wife. That was such a good video you guys did. Yeah, she blocked me after I made that video. Well, she it's weird because she unfriended me and I noticed that she unfriended me and then like a day or two later, I noticed she blocked me. So I don't know if she just 
unfriended me and then her husband said that's not good enough. Like, from the memories and the traumatic memories that I have of being involved in that whole thing, that's a very possible thing that could have happened. He could have made her feel like she's a bad wife if she doesn't block me. And that's probably what happened. But I, I don't know, I, that's the sucky thing is like, she went and blocked me and then I feel like she hates me for posting that, but, and, and I'm getting this guilt within me for posting that about her husband, but I'm like, why am I feeling guilty for sharing a story that is my story, that is Priscilla's story, that's Michelle's story, and, and we're allowed to share that. We're allowed to share those experiences. Oh, uh, thank you, Val. Welcome to CCC membership. Oh, wait, he got a membership. Now, Val, sorry, for a second I was like, did he just donate? Now you can do this, though. That's what the membership does. <laughs> I just commented it. You're a member now. And so when you're a member, you're, you're, you get the little CCC coffee cup next to your name. Yeah, I get sick easier when I'm sad or stressed out. Okay. I, I, I was thought I was on to something because I do feel like I my immune system goes down when I'm depressed <laughs> But then when I'm like happy and healthy, I feel like I I I'm on top of the world I could never get sick when I'm going to the gym eating healthy But I think it's also like when you're sad, you're not taking care of yourself as much. You're not, you know doing those necessary things to help your immune system I Will not stay quiet so you can stay comfortable. Yep. I feel like I'm kind of upset at myself that I feel a little bit of guilt that she blocked me after sharing that about her husband, but then I'm also like, that probably just means that I still really love and care about her. And I, I, I wish it were different. I wish she could see things through my eyes, but she can't obviously. I just have to hope for the best. I have to hope for them to see it. That's the problem. And I posted this actually on my Instagram. Uh, it, it was a video, Dr. Romani, it starts, she starts to talk about how the narcissist in a relationship with someone is usually in a relationship with a, an enabler. If they're together for long enough, it becomes a narcissist and an enabler. And there's a lot of people who are in relationships with a narcissist and they're an enabler. My mom, for example, like pretty much 90% of the women in the order are enablers married to narcissists. But in this case, uh, when an enabler, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase what um, Dr. Romani said. It's basically like you have to be an, an enabler to be in a relationship with a narcissist because you're making excuses for them and you start to gaslight other people and gaslight, you're gaslighting yourself and other people into thinking that this narcissist is greater than they are or not doing the things that they are doing. And that's the problem is like, even though I love her so much, being her friend was starting to ruin me because of the narcissist, because she was an enabler, because, and it got, came into this toxic relationship where she started to turn into him type of thing. Like she would tell me things like, well, you need to be friends with him. I, you can't be my friend and not be his friend. You have to be my husband's friend too, things like that. And I'm like, where does that make sense? Like I wouldn't tell, and I was married at the time. I was like, I wouldn't tell you that you have to be friends with him to be my friend. Like that doesn't make any sense. But like it would make sense to her because she's when you're eat sleep breathing next to this narcissist you are going to believe what they're saying at least some of it but yeah narcissists and enablers that those are the dynamic duo <laughs> and you see them everywhere sadly it's not just in the order it's not like it's very common and it's hard to be friends with someone who is an enabler like that because we see it we see it so clearly, but when they're in it, it's kind of like when you're in a toxic relationship. You can't see the red flags as easily until you finally take a step out and you're like, wow, that was, that was not okay. To, like, why did I put up with that? <laughs> but when you're in there, you think that it makes sense because it does make sense. There's a lot more at stake, I guess, when you're in the relationship. You are absolutely allowed to share your experience. It's not your fault if someone is hurt by it. And this is the thing I try, I'm trying really hard and I did try really hard even while editing the video to cut out things just to make sure that it was still as respectful as possible to her while not censoring our story. 
but it's hard to tiptoe on that line. And no matter how we would have done the story, I think no matter how I would have said the story to be truthful, she was gonna block me regardless. So you just have to, that's the thing is you wanna wait, you wanna hope that she wants to stay my friend and hide everything that happened and hope that there's not gonna be any more victims or share the story knowing that there's not gonna be a friendship after that. And it, but like that, now the truth is out. I actually did get a lot of messages from order people saying that they were glad that we talked about it. So I don't regret it at all. Esco says the truth is oftentimes hard to share at first, but then very refreshing once you are open and honest. Yeah. And I strive really hard to be a more honest version of myself. Why is my laptop doing this? But yeah, it's hard. Uh, for a lot of people, it's hard to just be honest because it, it means you have to take a hard look in the mirror at yourself. But I strive. Narcissists tend to try to isolate their partner. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I agree. Mary is hurt by her husband's actions. Yeah. I used to be such an enabler, never again. And see, I feel like we have all at some point been an enabler in a relationship, whether that was a spouse or a friendship even. You can be an enabler in a friendship where maybe the person's a very toxic person, a very negative person, and a very, like, maybe bullies other people or does things that are um, not socially acceptable, but you're sitting there allowing it or like, oh, that's just, that's just Jeff, you know? Like, no, it, at some point, like, and that's the thing is a lot of people think, well, I, that's not me doing it. It's not, it's them doing it. You know, why? That's, I don't know what to do. We're like, at the end of the day, what's that quote? I know this is a little dramatic, but it's the whole, like, the only, the only way evil can prevail is for good men to do nothing. It's kind of similar to that, though. Like, that is what an enabler does. They sit there and they're like, well, like, even my mom, for example, she'd be like, well, yeah, your dad this and your dad that. Like, darn it. Like, if if he wasn't this way, then da 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 But it's like, you're allowing him to be that way, though. You are enabling him to be that way. To be in your life and affect you and the kids and, you know. So... I think that we've all been through it, though. We've all, at some point, been an enabler. So I'm glad that you realized that, too, Crystal. You used to be such an enabler never again. Because it is. It's, it's, it's not healthy. And it's also not a happy place to be for you, for any of us. When there's a red flag, when there's red flags, everyone can see them from far away, but up close, you just see a pole. Yeah, that's a good point. And it's so hard to walk away when, when you're like in love with the person or like you're like, I know this person, but it's, when is enough enough, you know? Have you heard of empaths with narcissist traits? No. But I have heard that narcissists are very attracted to empathic people because that's where they get their, you know, soul sucking. <laughs> Empaths are with narcissistic traits. It's a result of relationship with a narcissist. The difference is the empath can heal and change. This is the thing I, I really am interested in. There's this video that, that Dr. Romani actually, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot about her, but she came out with this video that says how a narcissist is made. And I want to watch it because I, I've always believed there's two ways, right? Like, like Paul Kingston, the leader of a cult, he was given everything when he was a child. Like he, his whole, all of his siblings were like put on this pedestal because of LaDonna, right? She was the leader's favorite wife. And so her babies are her babies. And so I, I do believe you can, you can create a narcissist by just constantly putting them on this pedestal. Like you are better than everyone. You can do no wrong. So then they're up there like, yeah. <laughs> but then sometimes I think it's society or like they can be born that way almost like kind of like, I don't know, the more I've been researching about these serial killers on our Patreon, the more I'm like, I think some people can just be born with these, these traits where if they're not 
trained correctly or noticing that there is a problem, it can progress worse and worse and worse. I do believe that each person can be like within the right environment and the right uh, teachings, they can, you know, be good or whatever, or not be a narcissist. But I don't know, though. <laughs> There's some people where it's like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Like, I don't think my dad, my dad is already set in his ways. Maybe, though, maybe one day he will self-reflect. I don't know. People don't want to hear the truth. The thing, I think that's, I don't know. There are people that they are seeking the truth and then there are people who, who want to believe that this is the truth and they don't want to seek. They're comfortable here. But that's what I think. That, Cause there's like people who leave the order, right? Who are truth seekers and no matter how hard the truth hurts, they want to know it. And then there's people who they do not care what the outside is. They don't care what's outside of their comfort zone they're gonna stay in it no matter what and no matter what i say on here no matter the evidence i can shove in their face they're gonna close their eyes and it's gonna just prove their point further and sometimes i feel like that's that's what happened with ryan and mary that's that's like the more i showed her like when i showed her him on tinder and i showed her all the stuff that he was doing the it's almost like the more she wanted to stay i don't know or the more he could manipulate her into thinking that i was the crazy one I don't know. She blocked you, but she can't block the truth. <laughs> the truth will set you free. <laughs> but that's the thing. The truth will set you free, but it will hurt. It will sting a little bit at first. And then you'll be free. Her biggest problem is having someone like that be a role model to her children. That's the thing is, though, is I don't know him as a dad. I mean, I know him a little bit as a dad because I knew how he was acting with the first kid and I... I guess we don't have to get too into details about that, but I do know how he was towards her and I did not appreciate it and how he was towards me and how he was towards Priscilla and how he was towards Michelle. My ex believed you had to support your friends even if they were doing something wrong or bad for them. It was a big issue for us. Yeah, I disagree with that completely because if you love someone, you want them to be healthy. And it's not like you have to sit there and be like, how could you do that, da 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 But helping them to self-reflect and understand, um, you know, why they're doing what they're doing or if they think that it's healthy for them, I think that's a good friend. I would rather be friends with someone who isn't afraid to, you know, they don't have to tell me, hey, why did you go do that? But be like, did you like how you felt when you did that? <laughs> or help me to understand myself better. Because why would you want to just be friends with someone who, like, do you want to just be, have your whole circle of friends just telling you that everything you're doing is okay? Like, how are you going to grow from that? How are you going to be a better version of yourself with that? You're not. At the end of the day, it's like, the only way to grow is to be able to be in an environment where you can progress. And that's not an environment where you can progress. Everyone's just saying, yep, you're good. <laughs> just do whatever you want. <laughs> she thinks that she's not as bad as she knows because she got them rose-colored glasses on. And we've all had them. We've all had rose-colored glasses, whether it was towards our parents, towards our spouse, towards our friends. Like, I think, honestly, most people have had rose-colored glasses towards their parents at some point. And then they have to realize, oh, that's not exactly what I want when I have a relationship or it's not exactly what they thought it was. My ex, let's see. A good trusting friend is very hard to come by, especially nowadays. If any of you have a true friend, keep them as such as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It can be hard. And and I don't think it's that like I think it's just like someone who's very self-aware and, and like healthy and wanting to progress. I think that's kind of rare too. I think that a lot of people are, would rather be in their comfort zone, would rather stay in this place of complacentness because the fear of failure or the fear of the unknown, whatever the reason is, like they, the comfort zone seems so much better. 
So then people like that aren't, aren't usually gonna be the people that are gonna push you to progress because they're not even pushing themselves to progress. <sighs> Does that make sense? <laughs> Am I making sense? <laughs> I'm an enabler right now, 15 years of enabling someone else, and at this point, I'm taking the loss and understanding I was at fault for my part in it while moving forward. Do you know what, though? That takes so much to be able to acknowledge where you're at and, and recognize that. Because for me, I say this story so much because it still like baffles me that I didn't realize it until Gerald told me. But like after my whole divorce talking about everything that like I, I just was processing like how could he do this how could he do that and Gerald was like oh well you let him do that to you you allowed him to treat you that way but it is so true at the end of the day it's like why was that so hard for me to, to swallow that pill but it, it it's I think it's because reality and the truth does hurt that we are at fault like if you're in a toxic relationship for seven years, okay, like let's say you're in a relationship that's toxic for seven years and you think that you weren't a part of the toxic at all, that they were the whole toxic, that's not true. <laughs> and like every time I meet someone who's like, oh, all my exes were crazy. Oh, well, but you were with all of them. So you, so what, what's the common denominator here, you know? Like you can't constantly be running in the same issues and wondering why am I running into these issues, you know? You have, if, if, and if you don't self-reflect, you're gonna keep running into those issues. So I'm proud of you for noticing that about yourself. It takes a lot, so, so pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Whistleblowers always have the consequence for being the truth speaker. I know, the, the whole shoot the messenger thing has been really happening to me a lot lately. People don't like the messenger. <laughs> it's like, I didn't make this happen, I didn't make this, this, truth over here that happened I'm just saying it you know like I had some of David's kids get mad that I was saying that David went to prison for raping his niece but I'm like I don't why are you mad at me for saying what he did be mad at him for doing it you know what I mean but no they want to be mad at me <laughs> I don't know shoot the messenger <laughs> You are making a lot of sense. You should honestly be a psychiatrist. <laughs> if you ever want to go back to school at some point, go for it. I, we believe in you. I loved my psychology classes and I, once I have time, I think I'm gonna go back for psychology. That was the one class when I was in college. I was getting all my generals done. Um, that class, I got 105, 102%, like I, triple aced that because I loved doing the extra credit. I loved doing all of the, the sh like you didn't have to do the extra credit, but I loved to do it because I wanted to learn more about how our brains work. And I ugh, never understood the people that were like, oh, psychology is my least favorite. I'm like, how could you not, how could learning about yourself be the least favorite thing for you? <laughs> I don't understand that. But again, it's because sometimes self-reflection takes a lot of work like figuring yourself out takes a lot of work so people don't want to do it but like it's so much harder in the long run if you don't do it you're going to end up in relationships that you don't even realize why you're in them you don't even like the person you don't even like yourself because you're not putting the work in it frustrates me because i know so many people that are like this it's like why are you doing it oh i don't know okay then <laughs> just live your whole life like that then is it just me or do cults generally encourage wives to enable crappy husbands? Oh yeah, my church was constantly, my church was constantly encouraging enabling behavior towards my alcoholic stepdad and my mom and I got all the blame. I don't wanna generalize religion, but from a lot of religions that I've seen recently, not recently, like even, remember when I said the whole story of when I left the order, I was like on the hunt for the new right church of God, right? So I'm like looking at all these different religions and realizing that, you know, they're all kind of similar. But I did notice a big thing was, I don't know what it is, and maybe it's just because it was Utah. There's a lot of blame on women and like no blame on men a lot of the times. Like, um, what's an example? 
divorce a lot of the time is blamed on women and like if a woman doesn't want to be with the man and she wants to file for divorce it's all her fault even though the man was the alcoholic the man was the, you know what i mean like it just frustrates me but yeah in the order a hundred percent like a billion times that like if uh if there the woman couldn't get pregnant it was automatically the woman's fault even though a lot of the times it was the male sperm but blame the women for everything basically same thing with when i was um acting up as a kid it was my mom's fault if i left the order it was my mom's fault but the crazy thing is, is when the kids did good things when they were following in line it was my dad's got praised for it my dad my dad wasn't even there that much but he got the praise for the good kids and my mom got the downfall for the bad kids and that happened all the time not just in my family in all the families that i saw <laughs> in the order it's just, it's so interesting, but it is very, sorry to answer your question, it is very encouraged for the women to just enable the terrible husband and the terrible dad because the dad can do no wrong. And that's the problem with a lot of, like when someone can do no wrong, then guess what? <laughs> you're going to enable them to do the wrong. When you're not gonna hold someone accountable, then that's where the downfall is gonna happen. Everyone should be, held accountable and you should be allowed to you know like paul is perfect he's the closest thing to god blah 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 and questioning him was like questioning god so it was a sin but then it again is pushing him to be more of a narcissist and to believe that he really can't do any wrong right and then instead of us being like hey that's not fair that you're taking our money and that you're doing these things then the person that says that gets shoved out instead of Paul getting reevaluated like wait is he is he making a mistake no they'd rather just believe in him and then push out the person that's causing questioning sorry that question i think triggered me a little bit <laughs> i i ranted wow new membership yay thanks val i think i'm behind on these comments So who's number 66? <laughs> number 66 is number 16 son. I can't say his name because he's still alive, but he's he's like the lawyer for the order's son. One of the main lawyer for the orders. When I talked about my whole entire story about Jason attacking me and the the, the, the lawyer that showed up on site was number 16. Like he's the one that get call, gets called all the time. So number 16 son is number 66. But he also, I heard this story where he wanted to become an attorney. I don't even know if he's a practicing attorney, but he kind of wanted to follow his in his dad's footsteps and become an attorney. Anything new on 66? Honestly, I don't know. Do you guys know anything? <laughs> Hi from Colombia. I caught a live. So happy. Question, how did Marianne meet her husband? Mary Ann. Are you, which Mary Ann are you talking about? Are you talking about Mary Ann Barlow? Because she doesn't have a husband. She has a boyfriend. <laughs> How do the guys get credit for anything good when women get all the blame? It prevents personal growth for both. Exactly. And I remember when I was in the order, I always felt like there was this invisible ceiling on my progression. Like every time I started to feel like I was up here, I would get pushed back down. And like, even like, can I go to college? Oh, when you get married, you can ask your husband if you can go to college. Can I pierce my ears? When you get married, ask your husband if you can do that. Can I go to another church? You need to get married and ask your husband if that's okay. That was always the answer. So it was like, and that's why a lot of girls do get married at such a young age. And they're more, and some of the girls are even willing to do it because they're like, well, this is all I can progress. I have to be under my parents. And so they think in hopes, they're gonna get married in hopes to be able to have a little higher of a ceiling. And sometimes the ceiling's lower, sadly. But I don't know. I really, in my opinion, especially with everything I saw and everything I, I grew up in for my personal uh, life, not speaking for other people, but speaking for me, I did not feel like anyone could really progress to the extent that you can progress if you leave. 
And after leaving, like I'm light years further than I would have been if I would have stayed. My mom always said, you've got to weigh the good and the bad. Whenever excusing my dad's behavior, I personally decided love was not enough in my relationships and wanted to be a better example. 100%. Love, love is all you need? No. In a, in a healthy relationship, it's not love is all you need. You need not only communication, but someone who's willing to understand, someone who's willing to put in that work to understand you and vice versa, someone who's willing to be honest with you, vulnerable with you. Like there's so much that goes into a healthy relationship. And then if you're gonna have kids, there's even, there's more. But people just be getting pregnant, having babies, not knowing anything about themselves. So how are they supposed to know anything about their kids? Cause they don't even understand themselves. So they can't understand the kids. It's, I always say you, you, there, it should not just be legal for anyone to have kids. You should have, if a lawyer has to go to school to become a lawyer, if a doctor has to go to school to become a doctor, but the most important job is having kids, raising human beings, but you don't have to have any degree for that. It's just, it's, it's, I don't know. Thank you for the memberships, Heather Weather. Love the stormy tree painting. Yeah, this, so this one is Amanda 2.0's and this one is mine. We painted today. We are putting these up on my website, justcoldytings.com and I will be putting that link in the description box down below. They're not up quite yet, but I just realized that I'm completely sold out of all of my art, so I had to put another piece up there. I'm gonna try to get more into that. I've just been sick and really off my game this past week, <laughs> but I think I'll be, I'm doing, I'm slowly rising. How have you guys been though? Did you guys do anything for St. Patty's Day? <clears throat> Pano Pano says, what happens when all the numbers are gone? I thought there were only certain number of numbered men. Oh, you're from Illinois, Cheryl? Been following since I broke down in occult desert area of utah oh. <laughs> um that's a good question so there's a bunch of theories as to why they have this numbering system of numbered men some people believe that it's based off of the similar thing that jehovah's witnesses believe and, and this is in the bible it talks about uh a number 144,000 or, or i think it's only 44,000 actually that will make it to to live with god um, in paradise or something. And so there's a, there's this rumor that that's why the order is numbering the men. Um, but if you look into order history and you talk to people who were in the order at the time of Eldon's time, Eldon, who the, is the first original leader of the order, he's the one who gave the, started the numbering system. And he started out as just numbering the people who joined the order. So Eldon was number one, cause he's the, the starter of the order, right? So his number is one. And then each person who joined got a number. Um, so he gave out a bunch of numbers and then he passes away and brother Artel, my grandpa becomes the leader. He becomes, he's number nine, uh, number eight. And he, I believe only gave out four numbers. And it, it, this is where it gets weird. It starts to be like the number is so sacred. Um, I think this is when the church starts to become about like, uh, more of a religion rather than a community rather than the DCC society. Right. So, and this is just like, I wasn't born at this time, but. He gives out four numbers and I heard that it was because at the time he had given out a number and someone like left right after and like basically like spat on the number, right? Pleh. So then Ortel felt it was so disrespectful that he was like, well, I'm not going to give another number out because it's basically like giving someone this ticket and then them throwing it away is like they're, they're basically just choosing hell and then he's basically like i don't want anyone to have to go to hell because they can't respect the number and that's what i'm what i heard from again i was i was not even born yet <laughs> but so he gives out those four numbers and then paul gets into play he's number nine right so we have elder number one or tell number eight paul number nine Paul gives out tons of numbers and it becomes to be more of this thing of where people are kissing his butt to be able to get those numbers. Um, people are on their deathbed begging for that number because it's like this this weird like ticket to heaven. Once you have the number, it's your ticket to heaven. So I to answer, it's, a, it's hard to answer that question because 
there's nothing that I've seen that's like, yes, there's only 44,000 numbers that are going to be given out. Because also, how does that make sense? Because there, when I was in the order, they were like, well, what about us girls? Where's our number? And so that's why they're like, oh, you do get a number. <laughs> like my mom, because my dad is 36 and she's the second wife, she would be 362. And if you guys watched my family Bush video, right, where, where I have that web of all my family, it shows the gravestone of LaDonna. And on her gravestone, she has 8.2 because she was the second wife of number eight. And my grandma Isabel had 8.6 because she was the sixth wife of number eight. So that's what doesn't make sense though, because I'm like, if the whole 44,000 thing is correct, we're just having all these dots in there. And then, and then to take it further, because I am the child of 36.2, I, this is so confusing, but I would be, because I'm a girl, I would be, because the boy gets the first number. Julie talks about this in her episode of, if you type in Julie Robinson, she talks about this numbering system. She's coming out with a book with this number, but because my dad is 36, sorry, this is getting so confusing. 36 two would be my mom, because she's the second one, 36, but because I'm a daughter, I'm a girl, so I don't get to have the first number. Eskel would be, because he's the firstborn son in the second wife's family. Are you following me? It would be, for Eskel, it would be 36 two, one, because he's the firstborn son of the second wife of number 36. But me being a girl, so Eskel would get the first odd number, then Cammy would get number two, and then the brother under Esco would get number three, then I would get number four. That's how I understood it when Julie was talking about it. And they used that on the bank system too. <sighs> so to answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> Amanda's watching me in the background. She's just like, <laughs> what are you saying? Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> don't cry. She's like trying to write it all down. Uh, anyway, three, six, two. You know what I didn't notice when I was editing the video for the family bush? LaDonna on her gravestone says LaDonna Peterson Kingston, but she wasn't the first wife. Kareen Gustavison was the first wife of Ortel. But why did LaDonna get to have on her gravestone Kingston? My grandma Isabel got Isabel Johnson. She didn't get Isabel Johnson Kingston. LaDonna was obviously the top biatch. That's not fair, in my opinion, that's not fair that she got to do that. Rude. <laughs> I don't know why I'm complaining though. Like everyone in the order knew how LaDonna was. Apparently, I heard that LaDonna would yank other wives out of the front seat so that she could sit in the front seat with Ortel. I feel like my grandma was just like, I do not care, you could have him. <laughs> like she did not care to fight, but there were some wives that were willing to fight. Did Kareen die before LaDonna? Maybe he legally married. No, 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 no. I worked with Kareen at Advanced Copy. That's how long Kareen lived. Like, I actually really loved Kareen. She was a sweetheart. She, she would, um, <laughs> I never told this story. I was working in the back with her. I think I was like 15 years old and we were working on the sewing machine and I was starving. And she was like, Manda, do you want some potato chips? And I was like, Oh yeah, she's like this old skinny lady. She's so sweet. I was like, I love some potato chips. And she gets in her bag and she pulls out raw cut potatoes. I am not joking, raw cut potatoes. And she gave them to me and I was like, these are potato chips? And she's like, yeah, potato chips. <laughs> but I don't wanna be mean to her because she was so sweet that she, she like brought them. And so I ate raw potato <laughs> for this old sweet old lady. But she passed away recently. Like, she was still alive when I left the order. And she was married to the original wife to Ortel. And she told me stories about how she tried really hard to have kids and she couldn't. And like, like they, they, it, was, it was weird, like they wouldn't survive. And I think it was because she, she I wish I would have mentioned this in the, the Family Bush video, but she's Ortel's niece, I believe. And I, I think that may have had something to do with why she couldn't get pregnant or like couldn't, a lot of the, the pregnancies couldn't be held to full term or there was always these issues with her kids. But yeah, sorry, to answer your question, Flicker Fade, um, no, LaDonna died way before Kareen died. And Kareen was, I believe, the legal wife. Where was she? Can you legally, you can't legally marry your niece. I guess if they don't know, that's your niece. <sighs> Anyways. 
so sad she couldn't have kids. Yeah, and she did guilt herself a lot. Like, she talked about that a lot when we worked together. I could tell that they probably were blaming her a lot for those issues. I bet she could have kids if she wasn't married to her uncle. That's what I wonder. That's... I wonder if that's what it was. Yeah. Or if she had some type of accident or something that caused. I don't know. But I could tell that she really felt bad that she couldn't have any. Any that survived, anyways. Um... Thank you, Stephanie. I'm late, but I finally got to add to the coffee fund. Thank you so much. She lived so long because she ate potato chips. To be honest, I think so. Because it wasn't just potato chips. She would only bring, like, raw foods. What? And she had, like, for her lunches, she loved avocado. So even after I left the order, I don't think she knew I left the order, but I dropped off a big basket full of avocados because she loved avocados. But she would only eat, like, raw. She would bring in these. I actually really did like this. It was it was dried pears, and she would bring the, in the dried pear slices, and I would eat them with her. But I think that might be why she lived so long, because her diet was so, like, raw fruits and vegetables. It was very healthy, clean produce. Wow. Yeah, Kyle Grant is here, and he said Korean was on raw food for a long time. I really, I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but I think that a diet of raw food can cure a lot of things, can help a lot of things. Because, I don't know, I just feel like especially the American diet isn't very healthy. I mean, look at me, I'm sick. I'm sick as the talk. It actually all made sense. I'm sure it gets even more confusing, especially when there are people leaving, dying, and being moved about in the order. Yeah, and here's the thing that also didn't make sense to me, like the whole 362, how my mom is the second wife of 36, so she's 362. What happens when we get to number 362? Well, and LaDonna is 8.2, but there is a number 82, but I guess 8.2 is, anyways. I'm confusing myself now. <laughs> We're done with this conversation. What was LaDonna doing that the others wouldn't? Um, I heard a story that La Artel was really in love with LaDonna, but he had to marry within his family as his first wife. For the, it was a bloodline thing because LaDonna wasn't blood, blood related to Ortel, so his first wife had to be Korean. So <clears throat> LaDonna was really mad about it. This is what I heard of the story. LaDonna was mad that Ortel had to marry Korean first because they were in love. So... Uh, and from the more I hear about Ortel, he was kind of a pushover for LaDonna and so LaDonna ran a lot of things and like ran over him because I think because he loved her the most, I don't know. But she just, a squeaky, squeak, squeaky tire gets the oil or whatever, squeaky wheel. John's like, you can't marry a niece in Utah, just checked. Okay, so either they did not legally get married, they just did a spiritual marriage, or they left Utah to get married. Which a lot of people will get married in Idaho. I believe, Kla, I think Chanel, when she got married in the order, they went to Idaho, like a group of Daniel's kids went to Idaho to marry their cousins and then come back. Idaho or Montana or something like that. So a lot of them are legally married, even though it's illegal in Utah, they'll hop the border and come back. <sighs> Maybe LaDonna was the legal wife, especially if he couldn't legally marry Kareen. It, maybe. I don't know, because I never knew Corrine as Corrine Kingston. I always knew her as Gustavison, but I never knew LaDonna as LaDonna Kingston, but her gravestone has it on there. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, go to, I'm going to have to link this down below because I keep talking about the Family Bush video. It has pictures of the gravestones, but I think you can even look it up on the internet, just LaDonna Peterson Kingston gravestone. Why is it a bush and not a tree? Because of the incest. Oh, sick. But in <laughs> <laughs> It was, I thought it was clever. Oh, it's so clever. It's so clever. Someone was saying I should have said vine, because, but I'm like, it's kind of more of a bush because we don't really branch out anywhere. We're just, this person married this person, and then they, they had this kid, and then those kids married each other. At the end. Eskel, did you just go live on Patreon? Oh, he did. Eskel's on vacation right now. Going live on Patreon at 8.20 p.m. tonight. Oh, wow, so in five minutes. Aw, oh, Jay Snow is here. I'm wearing my necklace. Thank you for the donation. You're so sweet. I hope you're doing good, Jay Snow. Sometimes I feel bad because 
I take a while to get back to everyone. You're one of the ones I took a little while to get back to, but I feel like when I'm sick and I'm stressed, but that's the thing. I know that you guys already understand it, but thanks for being you. Oh, you're so sweet. I hope you're doing good, Jay Snow. Hi, Kevin Yost. I've got a family bush too. <laughs> We're a little messed up. I know, I feel like it's not that, I mean, it is more rare than not, but there's, it's not just these culty people that are doing the incest stuff. Oh. All right. Well, maybe we should close this out so that Eskel can do his Patreon live. <laughs> Who wants to say prayer? Face North. I should be asleep being I work at 4 a.m., but I hate missing you guys. <coughs> Hi, Sally. <coughs> I'm glad you're here. <coughs> My throat gets dry from these allergies, and it's like, <coughs> I can't stop coughing. Perfect timing, though. We, we should go. <laughs> if you guys want more lives, go over to Esco's Patreon. He's going to go live on there. And I am going to be, uh, right after this is, we're done here. I'll put these paintings in the link in the description box down below. I'll put my family bush video in the description box down below. And the Patreon link, because there's a few of you guys that were asking about it. But thank you guys so much for showing up. Thank you, Emily. She just put the JustCultyTings.com in there. You're so sweet. This was really fun. Sorry, there I didn't do a bunch of research for 66, because I've been so not having it. But... This has been fun. I always enjoy being able to talk to you guys and look forward to, so tomorrow we're on Patreon, we're gonna be diving into a uh, serial killer. <laughs> and I think we'll be doing some upper level lives because I'm starting to feel better. And we're coming out with a podcast episode. It's either gonna be the Calvin episode. I'm trying to get that one done in time, but if not, it's gonna be the, the episode with Gerald and Amanda 2.0. Thank you for the donation, Lulu. I hope you feel better. Thank you. I do feel a lot better than the, the previous week. Like, way better. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. Um, how did I get... How do I get a coffee cup? Oh, if you join... So if you look but below my video that says join next to my name, that's how you become a member and you get a coffee cup. I mean, it's not a ton of perks, but... <laughs> I am trying to, to see if I can do like uh, exclusive videos just for the members. But yeah, and you also get these emojis right here. Just if you're interested, there's no pressure. But anyways, love you guys so much and I will see you coming out with a video this week. If I don't see you on Patreon, I'll see you next week for Cold Cup of Coffee 67. Okay, love you guys. Bye. Is this going to work? Hello?